Hello and welcome to the Berkeley Advanced Media Institute. This is an Adobe Audition tutorial. We're just going to be covering some of the basics of using an audio editing software like Adobe Audition. If you haven't used a software like this in the past, it might seem a little bit overwhelming. That's completely okay. It's okay to be confused at this point. Just watching is going to give you a better understanding of some of the tools we're going to be using in class. What we're going to need for this tutorial is a downloaded copy of Adobe Audition, I've got mine right here, and an audio file which we plan to edit. Mine's right over here in the corner, it's called Numbers Audition Practice. So once I open up Adobe Audition, as I have right here, you'll see the big editing bay that pops up. The first thing that I need to do is I need to start a multi-track editing session. So I go up here to this little tab labeled multi-track and I'm going to click it and it's going to open up and prompt me to name my session. So I'm going to name it Adobe Practice or Audition Practice. And I'm going to save it to my desktop right next to my audio file. I'm also going to make sure that the sample rate is 44,100 hertz, bit depth is 16, and the master file is mono. It's okay if you don't understand what these mean, don't worry about it. We're going to go over it in more detail in class later. For now, just make sure that those settings line up with mine. So once I have named my multi-track session, this is going to pop up and you're going to see that I've got a couple of different editing tracks. I've got track one through five here and there's a sixth one visible. This is, after all, a multi-track editor, so each of these tracks can represent a different line of audio. Today, we're only going to be using the first couple. So what I'm going to do to get started is I'm going to take my file, which I've pre-downloaded, called Numbers Audition Practice, and I'm just going to click and drag it into my session, into the first track. I'm going to take an opportunity right now, now that I've gotten all my audio imported, to save this session. It's great to save your work as you're going in Audition. It's a wonderful program, but occasionally, like all things, it does crash, and it's great to be able to know that uh, you saved your work as you were going. So to get started, I'm going to listen and see what kind of audio we're working with. I can use the spacebar key to make my playhead start moving and play this audio, or I can come down here and there's a little play symbol, which you can also click. Eight, four, two, one, five, nine, nine, nine three, six, seven. Great, so it sounds like I have an audio file with a bunch of numbers that are out of order. What I'd like to do is put them into some kind of order, and that's where our editing is gonna come in. So to begin our editing, there are just a couple of tools that are gonna be helpful for you to know. The first one is the razor tool. I can come up here to this little icon which looks like a razor blade, and I can click it, or as you'll notice when I hover over it, do you see that little R in parentheses? That represents a shortcut command for my keyboard. So if I press the keyboard key R, that will also give me the same razor tool. So if I make a cut anywhere in this audio file, it's going to separate it into two new audio files, as if I just sliced a piece of tape. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to make little cuts in between each sound bite here. You can see the sound wave actually on this file. It's the little green blurb that looks like a larger sound wave and then the flat lines generally represent silence. So I don't even need to listen to this to know that I'm cutting in between the different numbers. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to slice up each one of these numbers that we just listened to. And right here, I vaguely remember this being a stumble. It almost sounded like not a complete number at all. Not, not. Nine. Great. So I know that I don't want this stumble. I'm going to cut that out so that my speaker sounds a little bit better. So I'm going to cut there, and then I'm going to switch to the Move tool, which is a pretty important tool as well. If you notice, there's an icon up here. It's got a little arrow and a four-way arrow symbol, meaning you can move in any direction. Or the keyboard command there is V. So you could also press V on your keyboard and switch to the Move tool. I'm just going to click up here. So now it's blue. You can tell my Move tool is engaged. I'm going to highlight that move tool and I'm going to move this stumble all the way out of the way. It's going to come down to track number two. We'll get back to that in just a second. 
Now I need to continue slicing up my audio, so I'm going to switch to the razor tool using the keyboard command R. See how it switched to a razor tool? So now every time I click in this audio, it's going to create a new cut. And there we go. Now I have each of my numbers sliced up. So for this next part, I want to go back to the move tool. Remember that's the keyboard command V. See how it creates that little four-way icon? That's how I know I'm in the move tool. So remember how I move the stumble down over here? If I were to move my playhead, which is this blue arrow facing down with the little red line coming out of it, if I just click and drag, moves the playhead all the way back to the beginning. I can also use these commands, this move playhead to previous or move playhead to next, and you'll see it hops between each of the different cuts that I've made or each different piece of audio that's separate. For now though, I just want to go back to the beginning and listen. I want to find out where those numbers are and what order I want to put them in. So let's go ahead and press play. Nine, eight. Nine. Oh wow, it sounds like everything's kind of stacked one on top of each other, right? That's because I put this audio on top of this audio and they're both playing at the same time. So now I'd like to introduce two new tools called the mute and the solo function. If I were to mute this track, you'll notice that the audio on this track turns gray. That means nothing on that track is playing. Only the things that are in color are gonna play in this entire session. So if I start from the beginning now, eight it's nice and clear. You can't hear these stumbles at all. The solo function is virtually the opposite of that. So if I were to unclick mute and put this track on solo, what it does is it mutes out every other track but the one that I've highlighted. So right now it's only going to play the things on my track that has solo engaged. Not, not. It's a little bit hard to tell the difference between these two things. I think that having a third track makes it a little bit more clear. But for example, if I were to solo now when I have three different tracks engaged, it mutes out again every other track in my session, not just one. Whereas if I were to use the mute tool, that blacks out only the track that has been muted. I hope that makes sense. Again, if it doesn't or if it feels like this is a little bit confusing, don't worry, we're going to have plenty of time to go over this in class, and if you have questions, we'll be able to answer them in person. For the time being, though, I think that covers more or less what we're going to need to finish this tutorial, which is the Razor tool, the Move tool, the Mute button, and the Solo. So I'm going to mute this track, because remember, these are the stumbles that I didn't really want to use. I wanted to use proper numbers, and those are a little bit of an accident from the recording process. So now if I mute that, I can actually drag this track down and out of the way, so I don't have to look at it. See that blue bar? That's where my track's going to move to. I can even move it a little bit further. Perfect. This gives me a lot of space to work with the numbers that I know I want. So if I press the space bar again, I can listen through to what I've got. Eight. Four. Two. All right. We've got an eight a four, and a two. And again, I've got my move tool engaged. See how it has that little arrow? That means that anytime I click one of these, I can click and drag it anywhere in the session. So I'm going to use the second track here. I like to use multiple tracks when I'm ordering, because if I use the same track and I try to move it around, see how it just slides one on top of the other? And you can't even tell that I actually have one piece of audio on top of another piece of audio like that. It's pretty easy to get confused. Whereas if I drag it down onto my second track, I can slide them one in front of each other, but it's really easy for me to visualize what pieces I'm working with. So I want to order these numbers from one to nine. So if this piece is my eight, and I'm gonna start building it out in order, maybe eight goes over here. The next number. Four. Four, that's probably gonna go somewhere in the middle. Two. And two, that's going to go towards the beginning. Great. So I've got two, four, eight. I'm already on track. Now, I know I want to listen to just this first track. I don't want to listen to these because I already know where they are and where they go. So I'm going to press that solo key 
and see how it mutes out the work that I've already assembled. One, five, nine. All right, one, that's gonna go in front of the two. Five, that's gonna go after the four. Nine, I'm gonna put that after eight. And now I can continue to play and listen to just what's green here on this track. Three, six, seven. Great. So I know that the three goes over here behind two. The six is going to go after five. And seven is going to go after that. And the seven looks like it has kind of a long tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shorten that clip a little bit by hovering just over the very edge of my piece of audio. I'm going to use that red bracket with an arrow that pops up and I'm going to click and drag and that shortens my audio. You can also move it in the opposite direction to make it longer again. So now that I've got my seven trimmed down more or less to the side I want, I'm going to put it into the rest of the lineup. Now I can take that track off solo because I don't need it anymore and all of these pop back into color. I also know that this is going to be my primary track that I'm going to be working with. So by hovering over here over this little white grid pattern with the hand, I can click and drag that track all the way up to the top. So it's the first thing that I'm looking at. Next, I want to make sure that it all sounds nice and smooth layered together. So I'm going to use the zoom tool to move in and out. There's a couple of different ways that you can zoom. Up here, this gray bar that you can see, if I hover over the corner, it pops up with a little magnifying glass, and by dragging the edge there, I can move in or out on my project. That's one way to do it. You can also use keyboard commands, the plus sign or minus sign, to either zoom in using plus or zoom out using the minus key. For now, I'm going to use this bar to click in and get an idea of where each of those numbers are and get a closer look at where they're overlapping with one another. And you can see that this has already started here, but we're getting something called a crossfade. That's what those two yellow intersecting lines. And what a crossfade means is that it's where one piece of audio overlaps with the other. And Audition's pretty cool in that it already builds in a way for you to blend the sound from those two pieces together. And you can really hear the difference. For example, every time you see this blank gray open space, there's just no sound at all in that space. And it might seem like silence would have no sound at all, but you can usually hear the difference between silence in a studio and the total absence of sound. Listen. One. Two. Did you hear how it just drops off right there in that gray area? We don't really like that. It doesn't sound very natural. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to slightly overlap the audio in the order that I want it to go. So now where that yellow crossfade has popped up, I know that the audio bleeds continuously into each other. Let's hear it, how it sounds. One, two. Oh, that's great. It's silent, but it doesn't sound like it's just dropping off into total black. So I think I'm going to do that with all of my numbers. Just create a light crossfade by sliding one piece of audio on top of the other. So I'm going to slide these over, giving myself a nice crossfade. You can see those different X's. Maybe I vary the length of gap between the different numbers because humans, unlike robots, speak with a varied cadence. So sometimes our gaps are a little bit longer than others. And we want this to sound as natural as possible. We don't want somebody to sound like a robot. We want them to sound like themselves, even if they're just reading numbers. So now by clicking up here in that timeline or sliding manually, I'm going to move that play bar all the way back to the beginning, and we're going to listen to our finished body of work all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Awesome, that sounds great. Once we've made all the cuts and adjustments we want to make, we want to actually export the audio file that we've created into an MP3 or a WAV format. Those are files that can be played by just about any device. 
Whereas what we're working in right now, an Adobe Audition practice session, it's called .sesx, that's not easy to read unless you also have Adobe Audition. So it's important that we mix down a completed audio file. So what I like to do is I like to click and drag using the move tool. It'll create this little lasso shape and I highlight just the audio that I want to mix down. I'm not highlighting this. It's also muted out so I know for sure when I export that audio is not going to be a part of this mix that I'm creating. Now I'm going to go back up here to file, back down to export, multi-track mix down, and I'm going to click the option that says selected clips. Now I get to choose what I want to call this thing. I'm going to call it audition practice mix one. I'm going to save it to the desktop just like everything else we've been doing and I'm going to choose a WAV file as my format. Everything else looks good. Those are the same settings that we set at the beginning. So I'm going to click OK. Now my file has been saved. You can see it, it popped up here as Audition Practice Mix 1. And we're all done. Again, this was just a really quick and dirty introduction to the basics of Adobe Audition. We're going to be going over a lot of this stuff in class. So again, if you have any kind of questions, don't worry, bring them with you. We'll help you out more in person. In the meantime, I hope that this has been helpful and has shed a little bit of light on what you're going to be doing for the next several days.